question for you. Does the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 5 over 2 to the n minus 1 converge or diverge? That is the question. And if you look at this, you might say, hey, this looks kind of like a geometric series. Um, it kind of looks like the geometric series where we just don't have this minus 1 here. I mean, if you think about it, when n gets really big, 2 to the n is going to get really big, and that minus 1 is going to be pretty insignificant anyway. So whatever happens to this geometric series down here is probably really similar to what happens to this one, because that minus 1, when n gets big, isn't going to have that big of an effect. So you could just imagine, if we know what happens to this series here, then we could know what's going to happen to this series, which looks pretty similar, right? So let's take a look at this series down here first in the green. We have the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 5 over, over 2 to the n. And we can get this into their geometric series form by just taking this 5 out front here. And we can take this 2 to the n, and that's just going to become our 1 half to the n. And now it's in our geometric series form where we can find our r value equal to 1 half right here. Of course, this is our r. So given that r value here, we know that this geometric series converges because our absolute value of our r is 1 half, which is less than 1. So we know this series in the green here converges, and we know that this series in the orange here should behave pretty similarly. However, we don't have a method as of yet to conclusively make this connection. And that's what the limit comparison test will do for us. However, in order for the limit comparison test to apply, there's um, several criteria that have to be met. So let's take a look at that and then get into an example of the limit comparison test. So back to our original question. And now in order to apply the limit comparison test, we're going to need to have two series. One is the seri our series we start with, the sum of a to sub n. Notice I don't have n equals 1 to infinity here because I'm being like those lazy mathematicians that I told you about before. But this is still a valid notation. So we got the, the infinite sum of a sub n and now we're going to use a series that's somewhat similar the summation of b sub n. And our first criteria is both of these have to have positive terms. That is to say our a sub n terms have to be all be greater than 0. Our b sub n terms have to all be greater than 0 for all n that we're concerned about. In this case, our n is starting at 1 to infinity, so any n between 1 and infinity, this has to, has to be satisfied. And we're going to have to take the limit. This is the limit comparison test, so as you might imagine, there is a limit involved here. We're going to have to take the limit of our a sub n over our b sub n. And we find that limit equal to c, where if c is a finite number and c is greater than 0. If all these criteria are met, then we can conclusively, definitively say that both series either converge or diverge. So we will be able to conclusively say that if our summation of b sub n, which is our kind of our simpler series, if we know that this converges, then we know that our series of a sub n also converges. Alternatively, if we know that our series of b sub n diverges, then we know that our series of a sub n also diverges. So having defined our limit comparison test, let's go ahead and cross this out, get a clean slate here, and go ahead and apply it. So before, before I show you the, the correct way to um, solve this using the limit comparison test, I just want to show you a wrong way because I just think it, it will be instructive on, on why it's important to choose an appropriate b sub n term. So let's just go ahead and, and show this process using a bad b sub n term. So this is actually going to, we're going to hit a brick wall at the end just to give you a heads up. So you may not want to write this down. But um, follow me if you will. So our a, first thing we want to do is choose our a sub n term. Well, we don't have to choose it. It's already chosen for us. This is our a sub n. So that's a sub n. Now we need to choose our b sub n. And we're just going to go ahead and choose poorly. And we're going to call b sub n 1 over 3 to the n. So you see it's kind of the same. This is 5 over 2 to the n minus 1, 1 over 3 to the n. You think they'd be somewhat similar. So let's just go ahead and apply this um, criteria and see what happens. So first thing we do, this is the limit comparison test, so we're going to want to take a limit here. So we take the limit as n approaches infinity of our a sub n term. We're going to plug in there. And our b sub n term, that we're going to plug in here. 
plugging those in, we get the limit of 5 over 2 to the n minus 1 over 1 over 3 to the n as n approaches infinity. First thing we're going to want to do here is multiply the top and the bottom by 3 to the n. And what that's going to do here is sort of cross out this bottom term. And multiplying that, we're going to end up with um, just that this top portion where that 3 to the n is just going to be multiplied by this 5 on the top. So from here, we're going to kind of want to do the reverse, and we'll multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over 3 to the n. And what that's going to do is cancel out this on the top, but this 3 to the n is going to come onto the denominator of our terms in the denominator. So applying that, we get this 3 to the n down here, and we can actually combine this 2 to the n and the 3 to the m into one term here. It's just going to be 2 thirds to the n. So let's do that with our next step, and this can just become one third quantity to the n. So here's our final answer here. So now going ahead and applying this limit as n approaches infinity, we find this two thirds to the n is going to go to zero. This one third to the n is going to go to zero at a faster rate, meaning that we're going to this denominator is going to approach zero from the positive side, and so this limit is actually going to equal infinity. Now, unfortunately, this infinity is not a finite number. So, this lim attempted limit comparison test does not satisfy that criteria where that limit of C has to be a finite number. We're, we, we haven't satisfied that criteria because it turns out we picked a bad b sub n because 1 over 3 to n goes to 0 a lot faster than 5 over 2 to the n minus 1. Therefore, these two sequences are not good to compare using the limit comparison test, which we'll abbreviate as the LCT. So we can just say here, LCT non-conclusive. But I just wanted to give you an example of choosing a bad b sub n just so you know what happens if you get the wrong one and to sort of motivate why it's important to, to pick the right b sub n term to save yourself a lot of this trouble and then find out that the test was non-conclusive. So we got to find a b sub n that, actually, that matches this denominator a bit better. So let's do that. But first let's um, get rid of all this stuff up here and sort of start from scratch. Okay, now let's find a good b sub n term. a sub n, of course, stays the same. It's just this up here. And now our b sub n, we're going to choose 1 over 2 to the n. And 1 over 2 to the n is better because it matches this term on the left in the denominator better than 3 to the n does. And this is, turns out this is actually going to work out, so we're actually going to make some progress this time. So let's go ahead and find that limit again the limit of our a sub n term over our b sub n term. Plugging those in, we get our a sub n on the top, our b sub n on the bottom. And applying the same strategy, we're just going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2 to the n. And that's sort of going to cancel out this bottom term here. So just like last time, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over this b sub n term. And that's going to kind of cancel out this 2 to the n here to 1. And if we go ahead and distribute this, we're going to get 2 to the n over 2 to the n, which is just going to be equal 1. And here we're just going to get negative 1 over 2 to the n. So cranking through that, we just end up with this limit as n approaches infinity of 5 over 1 minus 2 to the n. And here we can finally apply our limit as n approaches infinity. This is simply going to go to 0. We got big on the bottom. So our limit, it turns out, is going to be 5. Now 5, it turns out, is a much more convenient number than infinity because 5 is a finite number. 5 is greater than 0, and if you look over here, our a sub n term, 5 over 2 to the n minus 1, is greater than or equal to 0. Our b sub n term is also going to be greater than or equal to 0, and this applies for all n that we're concerned about. Therefore, we've checked off our first requirement, we've checked off our second requirement, and we checked off our third requirement, 
and therefore we can conclude that our series of a sub n, which was 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, converges by the limit comparison test because, as we determined in that first part of our video, that series with a sub n, or 1 over 2 to the n, converges by the geometric series criteria. So with that, we have finally answered our question here, and we've applied the limit comparison test to conclusively determine that this series does in fact converge just like our geometric series of 1 over 2 to the n does. So just to summarize, we discussed the limit comparison test, and we found that if the series of a sub n and the series of b sub n are both series with positive terms, we find that limit equal to c, where c is a finite number and c is greater than zero, then we can determine that both series either converge or diverge. Both series will behave similarly with regards to convergence or divergence. And that is the limit comparison test.